So without further delay in regards to uh, the service in which we have on today, we do appreciate, amen, all that uh, God has already done, amen, here at New, amen, Philadelphia Church of God in Christ. Amen. Um, Let's pray. Good God, we just come before your mighty presence. First of all, to say thank you. We thank you for all that you have done, that you're doing, and that you're going to do. And we ask God that you may just continue to bless us, God, as you already have here at New Philadelphia Church of God in Christ, God. And we thank you, God, for Pastor Tito Williams. We ask blessings upon him and his family, God. That you continue, God, to just do your will and your work, God, through him, in him. And in this community, oh God. And God, we just love you and we thank you. We bless your name. And we already thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that yeah. we'll go out and tell someone glory, glory. about Jesus. So, God, we bless your name and we magnify you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, um, today, um, in your Bibles, there's a First Corinthians, and I'm just going to right there. First Corinthians. Chapter 1. No, not chapter 1, chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. And we'll be looking at verse number 11. So, the first given on God, head of my life, amen. Martina, amen. Um, thank her for the introduction. Of course, uh, the pastor of this great church in Philadelphia, Pastor Tito Williams, uh, First Lady Williams, God bless you. And, amen. Deacons, saints, and friends. Amen. It's good to be here uh, once, uh, once again. Um, back in the neighborhood, and back in this area. Uh, we were driving here, it was kind of like we wanted to turn on Nelson as I was coming down the <laughs> like I'm going home or something. And, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but it's truly a blessing to be back, uh, back, back over here in this area. Amen. Um, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verse number 11, this is, how, this is how it reads, just one verse here. It says this, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I was a became a man, I did what? Put away, Put away childish, childish things. things. You may have your speech, but the Lord is blessing here is a good word. Just wanted to just say today in regards to the title of when I became a man. Uh, this is what Paul here is speaking of here. So today we will, um, our text is going to show us what a man was, mm -hmm. we just read the passage of scripture, what a man did, mm -hmm. and what a man should do. Amen. So as we get into this, you will see that the passage applies to men, mm -hmm. women, and children. Mm -hmm. So I just have one point for us today, and that is just simply this, grow up. <laughs> Amen. Grow up. Amen. <laughs> Grow up. I mean, this is this what this was. Look, look what it says. It said, "When I was a child, I spake as a child. When I and he said, I understood as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. And then he says, but mm -hmm. when I became a man, meaning he what grew up, right? Right. I did what? I put put away childish things. Uh, so, go look at what a man was, and better yet what us grown folk were. So first of all, a child. This is what we all did, and if you are a child today, this is what you do, and if you do it, us grown folk should not be doing it. Yeah, y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. If a child is doing something right now, whatever a child does, the grown folk should not be, do it. be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when a baby is talking, you say he spoke like a child, right? Mm -hmm. When baby is talking, the child go when he start talking, go what? Goo goo. <laughs> Making all kinds of what sounds. Right. Uh, so I guess they're talking some type of language that they know what they're what they're saying or or what it's their language, right? Mm -hmm. 
And then, but, but it's a child language, but we end up talking like the baby. <laughs> because when they say it, what do we do? Say it to what you say. Absolutely. And that's what we do. We don't talk like the baby. And some of us are still talking like a baby. Like a baby. Uh, but really, Paul is talking about our growth pattern and that it's only a matter of time that our baby talk is no longer part of our makeup. He said it's past. Uh, so what he's saying right here, through all his texts, previous texts, we all know 1 Corinthians 13, right? It's the love chapter. That's right. You know, and he talks about how uh, all these different things they say at the very end, only love matters, only love, uh, you know, remains. Everything else drops away. Everything else goes away. But love remains. Yes. But here, <clears throat> goes on and, and said, but not only did we speak like a child, but we understood as a child when we were a child. You know, we all know how a child understands. They don't. <laughs> I, I mean, really, they don't. They understand it to the level of their interest, mm -hmm. not the grown-ups' interest. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we would tell them to do something, we would talk to them, and, and what, 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 what is their response sometimes? Uh, why? Uh, you know, if you ever catch that, back when we were growing up, that why never came out, because if it did, it didn't come out no more. <laughs> uh, so, we understood then. But here's what Proverbs 4, uh, 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the Principal thing. Yes. Therefore, it says, get wisdom and with all, all the get and get uh, understanding. understanding. So we got to have that, that understanding. He put pause right here. He said, look, he says this right here. He says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But he also said, I understood as a child because I was a child. That means that what us grown folks shouldn't be understanding like a child. Right. Yes. Ooh wee. So understanding, but not only did Paul say right here in eleven, he says, uh, but uh, he understood that. But he also says, I thought as uh, a, child. a child. So with things of the child, can you repeat after me exactly? Exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you think of child, exactly, because then you know that's just how a child thinks. Simply that there is a, a, as a child, you don't have to reason things out. You don't even have to think. Mm -hmm. You just go. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, uh, some of us grown folk, we are still just going. Mm -hmm. Not thinking, better yet, thinking as a child. Uh, there, was, there was something that happened yesterday with the golf tournament. <laughs> and I had, um, we were getting this food. I was, I was getting this food. I had to pass a back. You uh, get your food. I got to get this taken care of first. You can't believe you get things, getting first, getting First, first things done first, right? I was in that line. I was going to give me some food because I got to get something. And so I was going over there and looking at all the food there and got me a hot dog. And, and I was putting this stuff in there. You either get a hot dog or a hamburger. And I got I was getting a hot dog, y'all. But you know what? I was getting the stuff that you don't put a hamburger on my hot dog because I'm going to load it up. Yeah. I put some onions on it and uh, some mustard and some relish. And pickles, and at the end they gave us some baked beans. I forgot to put the beans on it, but I put the beans on the side in, in the little, you know, little area there. And it got chips and everything. They loaded us up; it was good. And then, you know, how the beans were on the plate. This the kind of plate that kind of, you know, <laughs> not the hefty kind, of right? <laughs> but there's a plate. And I got got the beans and stuff. And then uh, I started going over there to, to the other area to get a soda. And as I was going over there, y'all know what's going over my plate, right? I was doing just like a child does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all know how a child does when they have carrying the plate? Mm -hmm. End up wasting the stuff as they're walking. Don't even have to than waste it, right? What the lady said right here, I was going over there, and I was just talking too, you know. I, like, I was just talking, and one lady, she says, uh, Sir, don't waste the food. I look, I'm a grown man, I don't waste no food. And that food and that beans was just, I was on the brim, head and on out. And I'm like saying, and I'm always talking to the children about that. You know, make sure that, the, that your plate, don't lean your plate, you know how you have a plate leaning and stuff. I even think just going and everything. Y'all, I was just going yesterday. And I thought about that thing. I'm acting just like a, a child. It's what does happen to us. And, 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 uh, and, uh, and uh, sometimes it's sad to say, but you know what? It does happen, happen to, the, to the best of us. So parents, we are commanded in scripture 
In Proverbs 21 and 6, here's what it says, y'all. Train up a child in the way he should what? Go. go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, I know sometimes we think that, hey, of course they depart from it. But if they're coming back, evidently is something is still there and and, 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 and and they ain't gone. Just like the man that, that got all his his, his uh, what, uh, you know, his father gave him his inheritance Arkansas. early and stuff yes, and, he, and he took off, but he came back. Came back. You see, he came back. So he wasn't gone. Uh so here, look, and for us men, I like using this right here. For us to learn from this passage in Deuteronomy chapter number six. Verses 4 through 9, and I gotta read that. I'm gonna take time to read that, y'all. Deuteronomy uh, chapter number 6, 4 through 9. And, and I like to use this when it comes to, to our young people and, and our grown folk, you know, the parents. Uh, because for some reason, uh, and especially the men, for some reason, us men, we think that the that the that the woman, the mother, should be the one who's who doing everything, raising them. Mm -hmm. Huh? And, and uh, but but I'm looking at this and I'm looking how how Amen uh, this right here is penned and how God had stated this right here and here in Deuteronomy chapter six verses four through nine it says this right here uh, Hear, O Israel yes. the Lord our God is one Lord one Lord there we go and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Basically what he's saying is that he, we're supposed to love him with our whole being. Right. With our whole being. Yes. Monday through Sunday. Thank, thank you. Monday through Sunday. Yes. I was going to say Friday, but Monday through Sunday. <laughs> Monday through Sunday. That's yeah. right. Love them all. And it's 24-7. Yes. That's what, because you know what? Oftentimes we say we want God to do everything. We want, we want Him to be for us all the time. 100%. Uh -huh. yes. When things are going good, thank the Lord. Things are going bad, thank the Lord. Things are, whatever it is, we just want to thank Him. We want Him to always be there because He said He would and He promised it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we did the same thing. Did we promise it? <laughs> we got saved and, and we said, we, but look, what happens is that. He don't want us part time. He want us full time. Y'all seen those signs in different places and everything, you know? Yeah. We, we serve a full time God, That's and right. we serve a full time God. He wants a man full time service. Yes. 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 That's what he wants. That's it. That's I don't it. go to church when I want to go to church. I don't feel like going to church today. Mm. During the pandemic, we had off time, didn't we? <laughs> yes. uh, some churches yeah. stayed open, but the rest of the churches, you know, we did. Start doing the online thing. At first, we thought online was just for those big old churches with all the money and stuff, you know, hey, websites and everything. But little do we know, it's right there at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. We just had to learn. And so, this right here, what Paul is talking about, look, this is a growing thing. We got to learn. Yes. And so, as we go on right here and there in uh, Deuteronomy, he goes on and says right here in verse number six, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Look at seven. Yes. And thou shalt, what's that? Teach, Teach them, them diligently. Y'all see that? Yes. Diligently unto thy children. children. And shalt talk to them of them when thou sittest in thy, what's that? Thy house. house. Uh-huh. That means we supposed to what? Be there. Mm -hmm. Not even mean we supposed to be what? Be there. Yeah. Can we say that again? We're supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and, and when thou walkest by the, the way, way mm -hmm. we're supposed to be there with our, with our children. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can we say we're supposed to be there? Supposed to be there. Uh -huh, man. We're supposed to be there. He says, walk is by the way, and when thou liest down, down and when thou risest up, oh, wow. you see, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine Hand, uh, we supposed to have that word, and they shall be as frontlets uh -huh. between thine Nine. eyes. And y'all know what frontlets are, don't y'all? Y'all watch gun smoke and everything else, right? <laughs> I don't know what they got today, but I don't think they have any. But horses, or whatever type of animal, they have those. Uh, I was gonna say blinders, but where they can only their focus is right there. They only see, and they're not uh, they're not uh, distracted by mm -hmm. other things. You see. 
The word of God is inside of us. And we should not be distracted by other things because he is so great inside of us. The Bible Lord. says that. Glory. Right. You know? But the thing is that it seems like distraction hits all of us for yes, some sir. reason or another. Yes, That's why we don't come to church. That's why we don't do our prayer. That's why we don't study the Bible. That's why we don't, 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 don't. Mm. Don't. Mm. Don't. Mm. It's the pastor's job. Mm. Don't. <laughs> we chill and we show up. The pastor, you got to get his stuff together way in advance. If not, that brother ain't going to sleep. Because time be, be showing up so fast. Mm -hmm. It's like the daylight saving time that flipped over a whole day already. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, it says this right here. Find them with thy sign upon thine hand, and, thine, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. We shall see, we shall see the word and, uh, and everything, and not be distracted on the outside or anything. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. That means the word is very near to them. As they went outside the house, as they were going outside the house, hey, there was hey, the hey. word. Lord. As they would come in the house, there is the word. My God. Uh, so the word was all everything that the children understood and the children learned. When they walked by the way, they talked about the goodness of the Lord. Wow. You see, how often have we told the children how beautiful it is today? How God made these sky, you know, made these clouds and the skies and everything, and, and how beautiful it is, and, and everything in which we see the grass growing, and, and everything, just just the, the air that we're breathing, and, and just giving God the glory through to it all, so they can understand, Amen, the glory and the goodness of of the Lord. So yes, the men, uh, we got to take hey. some hey. some uh, what do you call it? What was that? What they get? Respo you said that? Responsibility, thank you. You know, for this. By our children, we just don't make them. Uh, I don't go about your business or something like that. Somebody got to take care of them and raise them and pay and do all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Everything. Yeah, I'm hard on men, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's all right. Mm. Because we're supposed to be leaders. Yeah. Right. If we don't hold each other responsible or accountable, who will? Amen. So it's going to be the law, mm -hmm. gangs, or whoever. Mm -hmm. we got to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how it's important for that, for that man. But yeah, so when we take a look at, at our news today, we can tell that us parents have not done such a great job. Right. Saved or not, have not done such a great job. Uh -huh. Uh, we got to get it right. When we see these children out there stealing cars, mm -hmm. y'all remember the Kia boys? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember those, right? Mm -hmm. And probably Kia girls too. Mm -hmm. They're robbing, stealing, killing each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are young. These are our kids. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Our kids. We know them either from the neighborhood, we are either in our family, or something. Our children, and we're upset at them. Why are you out there doing it? Then we ask, why? Why is some fifteen or sixteen year old doing up two, two or three o'clock in the morning, away from the house? Most of the time, we want everybody up in the morning. I mean, up that late in the house. Yes, yes. Because when you go to sleep, you don't want those children up. That's right. You close your eyes, you want their eyes already to be closed. Yeah. You all know what's going on around you. That's what my wife always say. Well, they had the grandchildren there, they're going to bed. <laughs> and then you're not your parents, obviously, of all kinds of time, whatever like that. You hear, you're going to bed at this particular time. But we ain't got school tomorrow. That don't matter. Amen. Right? Amen. Going to bed and you going to. Right. You're going to bed. That's right. And uh, so, so as men, we we got to do our job, and we got we got to do it do it right. Seeing our children out there doing all these things, and and uh, it is just it's just a lack of home training. That's what it is, a lack of home training. They want to blame it on the on the churches. Y'all heard people say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Church doors are open. Come on in, right? Amen. Yeah, Come on in. Can't blame it on the church. It's the parents' responsibility. Yeah. He didn't say he 
Hey, God hey. did not say uh, 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 what, what, what is it? synagogue or uh -huh. matter of fact they had God God didn't, didn't say uh you know all this but what he told them he talked to the families. Mm. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Amen. That's what that's what that's what he did. Amen. So children are doing all those old. Yeah. We just hear the stuff on the news and and see what's going wrong and see what's going bad and everything, not understanding that we have something to do with it individually, the families. And then we'll blame it on the city, saying we need more gyms and, and we need more this. And the church got in the habit of doing it too. So we started building those life centers. Y'all remember those yep. gyms and everything and, and started doing all that kind of stuff, getting outside of what our whole goal and duty is. Yeah. Right. Now, now the people can drop the kids off at the at the at the life center now. Right. <laughs> right, all right. Just like they already been doing at the church. Uh -huh. Drop them off. <laughs> now your responsibility. Folk coming into church doing all kinds of things now, shooting up and stuff like that. And you gonna drop your kids off? You be there. So if you're there, you will connect that uh, our security. Yes. Right. Because yes. you're not gonna allow anything to happen to your children. My God. So. Goes on and us men have been walking around because we dropped the ball, been walking around, still talking like a child, understanding like a child, mm. thinking like a child. Wow. You know, can somebody say we just gotta grow up? We just gotta, we just gotta grow up. Yeah, man. We got to grow up. That's what Paul said right here in the in the Bible there. He said, he said when he said when I when I when he said when I he said when I became a, a man. Yes. And he did something. When I became a man, he said, so it's time for us men to walk like men, pull up our pants, mm -hmm. so our sons will not have their pants, uh, what do you call it? Sag. Sagging. Time for us men to talk like men so our sons will know that our word is our bond. Yes. What we say that we're going to do, we're going to do it. Right. Right. I was going to make it here today, brother. <laughs> I was going to make it, man. I was going to make it. And so time for us men to be, uh, uh, well, be li like men. <laughs> It's time for us men to be a man. Yeah, glory. Mm. And not mm. a woman. Uh oh, yeah, man. Uh oh. Man. Mm. Time for us men to be a man and not a woman. Yeah. Or even want to be a woman. When we talked about what a man was, he was a child. We found out some of us still are acting like, acting like one. We talked about what a man did as a child. Yes. We did what a child did, and some of us still are. Mm. And in closing, I'd like to share what a man should do. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul is urging us to put away our childlike behavior and grow up. Cool. That's what he's telling us. Paul continues here and tells the Corinthian church to grow up. If we, if we grow up, church, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to, according to what the Bible says, put away childish things. Yes. With that said, let me tell you what the, that, that, that we do not tell you that we do not know how to put things away. When we grow up in age, first of all, we just like children. We would put just we would just put things aside where we think it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. You know, we tell the children put it where it's supposed to be, right? And that's what we do. Put it where it's supposed to it's supposed to supposed to be. And then what happens is that the other way is when we put something away and we can't remember. Where we put it. Where we put it. <laughs> so it kind of makes us act and feel like a child again. <laughs> so it, it doesn't go far away from us. But, but thanks to God. 
to put something away as Paul is speaking up here, only the Holy Ghost can do it. Because if we try to do it on our own, amen, it will not work. We must rely on Lord. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We must rely on the Holy Ghost. He said, look, when I became a man, look, in Hebrews 12 and 1, it says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us what? Lay us lay aside every weight, weight and this is not some of the weight and sin, but every look, look, all of every weight and the sin which stuff so easily besets us. And then it said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's what it says. So he's laying aside. If we lay it aside, then hey. we're not going to pick it back up because what oh, happens is that the Holy Ghost is guiding us and directing us. We yeah. lay stuff aside and we forget about it's cool, especially if it wasn't good. Mm. But lay it aside, the mm. weight yeah. and the sin. And we know the weight is just something that simply keeps you from doing what you should be doing. may not be a sin, but it's keeping you away. Mm. Yeah. It's holding you up. Right. It's hindering you. Uh, so, yeah, so, so everything, I know, you know in the church years ago, we said everything was a sin. Everything was a sin. Everything. Everything seemed to be a sin. Couldn't do nothing. Then you wanted kids, kids growing up. I know I didn't. I didn't want to go to church. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found myself walking down there to Orange Mountain, to <laughs> Boston Street from over here, mm -hmm. you know, after, after they left. <laughs> I didn't get there. Uh, so the thing is that because of it hurts so much of what you can't do and can't do and you know even the under Bible handle not and, and everything else but but what we find out and what we learn is that when we allow the Holy Ghost to teach us and guide yes, us that's it. we gotta worry about those things we say we can't do because we're gonna do what he says to yeah, right. Thank you, and within the scope of, the, of, 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 of what he has given us amen we are happy we are we are we are uh, uh, we are enjoying ourselves within within that area in which we have been given. And we all need borders. That's it. So, so the, the only way we can really grow up as it is in maturing, we can only do it through the Holy Ghost because he is a keeper. Yes. Uh, so as men can follow a simple acronym for manhood, <laughs> that I learned from teaching men in jail and those who have gotten out of jail a course in authentic manhood. It's called 33 series. Mm -hmm. This is what a man's supposed to be like. Christ. Not Mike, but Christ. Mm -hmm. This called this thing is R-A-L-I. R-A-L-I. It's acronym. Reject passivity. Accept responsibility. Lead courageously and invest eternally. So we tell the men that acronym because that acronym pretty much defines what manhood is about in following Jesus Christ. But first of all, that R is reject passivity. And what he talked about in that, in that is when y'all yeah, yeah, remember Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What happened was, is, let me see, I mean, let me throw it down so I won't, so I won't remember it. Reject passivity, so we are to step up. Mm. Unlike what Adam did when he knew Adam, when he knew Eve, plucked that pear from the apple tree. Right. <laughs> Y'all catch that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> when Eve plucked that pear from the apple, apple tree. tree. Pear from the apple tree. I said, okay, so so look, so look, uh, it was. Instead of it being in Genesis, in Genesis chapter number three, that's what it is, verse one through six, here's what it talks about. It talks about that, that snake, we call it serpent, right? right? They say he was cunning, yes. you know, among everything else, slick. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then he got to talking to Eve, and he got to talk Eve whispering stuff in her ear, uh, telling her something, something good. Mm -hmm. About the trees and about the about those things that are on it and what can happen and everything and we had a pretty good conversation evidently and so he swayed Eve into plucking a fruit from a tree that she wasn't supposed to because Adam evidently told her not to right. and then 
Once she plucked that fruit, she ate it. Nothing happened. It was good to her. But she gave it to Adam. And he ate it. And boom, their eyes were opened. And what happens is that he was passive in this particular situation. Because, first of all, when he saw that six-foot snake talking to his <laughs> wife, he was supposed to stop him. Oh, my God. Whispering her ear and stuff like that. So he started, just said, ah, it's nothing. But y'all hear me? Six-foot snake standing mm -hmm. up on two feet. Okay. <laughs> 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 and so, so then, uh, that, was, that was being passive. He should have stepped up. Mm. At that particular time, being who God had called him to be, after all, he knew that snake. Mm -hmm. He's the one who named him. Mm -hmm. So, that passivity were to reject passivity. So, when things come in our lives, men and, and women, we didn't know what it is and, and we're not being passive about it, but, but step up and, and hey. take care of it. Hey. That A, the A, the R, and the A, A is accept responsibility. Yes, yes. Mm. And so we, so we grown now. Mm -hmm. We don't play the blame game uh -huh. like Adam did. Y'all remember what Adam did? Yes, yes. Adam said, uh, you know, God asked him a question. That woman, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you know you naked? Uh, and then Adam got to saying that it was that woman that you, <laughs> that you gave me. Uh -huh. It didn't stop there because Eve says, it was that snake, you know. So everybody blaming everybody. Uh, and, and so we take responsibility. We mess up. We accept that responsibility. And then, uh, then we just go on with it. I mean, that's what we tell our children. You did something, you're going to take responsibility for it. So you're going to get a weapon. You're going to get... Uh, what do you call it? Discipline. Uh -huh. You're going to get discipline. Time out. Time out. You're going to get time out and things like that, you know. You're going to get time out. <laughs> And so, it goes on and says this right here. Now, R, reject passivity. A, accept responsibility. L, lead courageously. Mm. Uh, so, that's what happened. See, Adam, when he saw that snake, that serpent talking to her, and, and he knew he was a serpent, and he knew, he knew that serpent was slick and, uh, and, and everything, but he didn't do anything, and... He should have been courageous saying, look, a snake, or, or no, he called him a serpent. Look, serpent, you get back and you do what you're supposed to be doing. Actually, I guess he was doing it, trying to, trying to uh, be cunning and trying to, you know, uh, bribe or whatever. Uh, but Adam was there and he could have controlled that situation. And then there's the I, invest eternally. Mm. We have to pour into the lives of our children. That's it. Because the future depends on it. Wow. We got to pour into our children because they are the future. And in doing so, we are important in order for us to do that. We got we to make sure that we're doing that. And not just let them do what they want to do. Uh, because they got to think about the future. Live now, but yet think about the, the future. A young lady going to school who thought about the payments. But the answer said, hey, look, I got to take care of now, but at the same time, there's some things that I, I desire to do. And God, I know you'll take care of it. So, rally, R-A-L-I, reject passivity, talks about manhood. Yes. Accept responsibility. responsibility. Lead courageously. Lead courageous. And invest eternally. Yes. So we men must model the life of Jesus Christ. Yes. The one that died for us on the cross. He's the one that went to Calvary yeah, for us. God, thank you. Even Jesus was a child. Mm -hmm. And he did childish things. Mm -hmm. Just like we did because he had brothers and sisters. Just like a lot of us. But when he became a man or mature. He put away those childish things. I know Jesus probably played marbles too. Mm -hmm. He probably won all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but he put those childish things away. But our challenge to us is to put away childish things if we haven't already done so. For the children, enjoy being who you are while 
you are a child. Because that's what children do. Just do it. That's what children do. <laughs> Be obedient. And when they're not, then what children do, then they get disciplined. Time out. What did we say? Time out. Do we, do we, yeah, we get disciplined some, in some form or fashion. Uh, so that's what children do. So children continue to be the children. Yeah. But be obedient. Enjoy your time. Uh, as young people, and we were grown, we have to model our lives in Jesus Christ with the scripture. And all, the only way to do that is to read the scripture. So it's incumbent upon us is to get into his word. And we say, well, the Holy Ghost is going to bring all things to my remembrance. But he ain't going to bring none to your remembrance if you don't put none in him. That's right. That's it. You have to get into that word. And you got to get it in you. Whether you understand it or not, but you got to get into that word. You got to read it. Uh, don't understand it? Just read it. It'll get there. It'll come out. It'll, it'll work in there. Just like when you're making bacon and making and stuff like that. It just don't pop out like a cake or pop out like some delicious, deliciously seasoned something. You have to put something in it in order for it to come out the way you wanted it. Got to work it. Mm -hmm. And if we want to be who God has called us to be, we got to put something in it yes. in order to get something, Amen. get something out of it. Amen. Well, Pastor, I pray that that we're able to share a little something with the people of God today in regards to in regards to uh, when I became a man. Hallelujah. There's something meaning that we all have got to mature. Yes, yes. We cannot remain an adolescent. Yeah. We cannot remain a child. Those things that we enjoy doing as a child, some of them are fine. But don't let those things dictate who you are. We're grown now. We're mature. We got to put those things aside. Those Hallelujah. things that kept us from going forward. I set aside. I, I can't. I can't do that no more. No, no, I can't. I don't want to do that anymore. Because yeah. we can do whatever we want to do. That's why God has given you this power of let. Let. Doesn't make us do nothing. <laughs> so then we follow him and as we do that our lives will affect other people around us yes. when we do bad it affect folk but let us do good and that should have the same effect to other people our children are going to watch us we watch grown folk in church when we were young and we saw how they conducted themselves. We saw how the ushers didn't let us go to sleep. We saw how they made sure they didn't gum from us. We saw all of that. But now we grow on ourselves. We are letting folks do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But it's time for a change. Because we got to follow what God has for us. And that's a challenge to us because we've been doing things that are on our own in the way, way in which we wanted to do it. But let us shift to what the Word says. You'll find joy in the word. Guaranteed. Yeah, joy, joy, joy in the word. And it's not like you got to be a preacher to do this. No. I enjoy this word when I got saved. I just couldn't get enough of it. Every morning, getting into this word, five chapters every morning. Couldn't wait till next. Just like those soap operas used to, used to come on every every week. And that come on every day. Come on every week, you know? You know that, yeah, you know, it's just like these right here. I couldn't wait till tomorrow. Like I couldn't read it the next, uh, you know, that evening. But I wanted to do it the next morning. I had a routine, a system. Because I had to retain it and then look forward to the next time. Uh, somehow, our children got to see us and watch us do it in order for them to connect. Outside of that, they're going to pick the phones, computers, whatever it is. They need to see a Bible mm -hmm. and see you in it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're doing the work it. for the family. Mm -hmm. Saints of God, that's it. God bless each and every one of you. Once again, it's about maturing in 
and God. And as we do that, the Holy Ghost will guide us and direct us. Pastor T.D. Williams, thank you. Let us pray. Hey, I'll God, we thank you for your word and, and how you use your word in us to guide us and to direct us. Well, God, you directed us to this particular passage of scripture. It's Paul penned it, oh God, to the church. But it's penned in our hearts that we're not children anymore. Mm. We're grown up now. My God, my God. And you tell us in, our, in your word to cast those childish things aside. No more hindrances. No more things keep us from doing the things that you would have us to do. No more distractions. But you've given us the power. So God, we thank you and teach us how to um, use that power of God. Hey, we give you glory. We thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there's someone that is